Hey, g'day guys, Rod here, and in today's video, what I'd like to do is talk about my arch enemy number one, the Jolly Cane Toad. They're a big challenge up here for me. Um, they're an introduced species, they're non-native, I don't like them, and they're always in my aquaponic system. So today I'd like to show you some of the challenges I face with the Jolly Cane Toad, how they overflowed my entire aquaponic system, 5,000 litres of water emptied overnight because of the cane tape. Well, here we go again. I can see another cane toad in my sump tank. Don't be fooled, he's not dead. Just looks it. He's alive and kicking. Got him. He's alive and kicking. Pain in the butt. You haven't seen a cane toad. They're an absolute pest here in North Queensland. I never allow these guys to survive. Never. They're a major menace. They're a major problem. And um, in an aquaponic system, look, they can even chock up your pipes. They can, and they do. Now, these guys introduced from South America. They are not a native species. They should not be here, and they certainly don't survive if they end up in my tanks. But look at the size of it. That's, that would clog up my 50 mil pipes. And they can, and they did, and they have in the past. So this is one of the additional challenges that we face here in Queensland. And um, I'm sure in oh, many countries around the world, actually, all the Pacific Islands, uh, I think America and Africa as well, have got cane toads. It's certainly in most states and territories in Australia now. Now I've experienced a situation where just one cane toad has gone and got into my gravel guard because I left the lid off. I have screw top lids of course, cane toads can't unscrew the lid. I left it off, it's my problem. However, it got into my gravel guard and it went up and into a bell siphon. Now, these things are big. These are big and, and this one was about 10 centimetres so I don't know why it was in there other than the fact that it was trying to get moisture and um, it got into my bell siphon and as you can see in the photos here I woke up to this situation where I've got an empty pond. Now in any situation where you've got a leak in your pond uh, you need to check your grow beds, you need to check your siphons, you need to check all the drips underneath you need to actually have a good look around and i did that and to my surprise yeah there was a cane toad in the bell siphon essentially it's just after the moisture they don't actually drink water so it's not going in there to drink or anything like that it's gone in there because it's habitat and aquaponics is creating the perfect habitat for cane toads and that's why they're so they're so effective uh, as a predator because they don't actually drink they absorb that moisture through their skin they can survive in all sorts of harsh conditions. They are poisonous as well. And yeah, they just, the, the size of these things as well, they can grow up to, I've seen them up to 20 centimeters here in some of the rainforests here in Cairns. But uh, the biggest cane toad that's ever lived is over 50 centimeters, huge. That was a pet. And look, back in the sixties, people used to dress them up and they were 40 centimeters commonly. Um, now that's pretty hard to find one that size, but um, they, they can get large in captivity. They eat everything and that's why they're such a menace. I'll just show you this little pond here as well that I keep on the ground at, at ground level and mostly for the frogs, but have a look at this. These are not frog tadpoles. They are cane toad tadpoles and this is a common occurrence as well. And this is also a little bit of a trap of mine as well. And this is where I catch most of my cane toads because it's low to the ground. But look, tadpoles are poisonous as well. I've lost a lot of perch and barramundi uh, when this happens in my main pond. Perch and barramundi are fond of anything that wriggles. So it's not unsurprising that they would eat cane toad tadpoles and eggs. 